Hey everybody, welcome back to Pixel Junkies. Hello. This is the Pixel Junkies podcast, episode 128. I'm one of your hosts, Rory DC. Tis. I'm Aaron. <laughs> I'm Adam. And this week we're joined by our very good friend of the show and occasional guest, Thomas. Hi. Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Watching at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that this week. <laughs> well, I'll still be watching it. Yeah, I'll still watch it, yeah. yeah. Instead of talking to the camera, we can just talk to Thomas. But Tom, Thomas entered a competition and he won the ultimate fan experience. And so he's here with us. It's uh, only split. This is like Michael Jordan fantasy camp for the little guy. He only, he only, massive, <laughs> he only massively beat out Jordan, and that's because Jordan didn't care. He's in Trinidad or something this week. Is he in Trinidad this week? I don't week? know. Oh, he's he's actually over at my house. Oh, is oh. he? <laughs> Where he was when I left. Yeah. He was at your house? Yep. And you left him there? He was there with Erica. Oh, okay. So, okay. You're, you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like Jordan came over. I was like, sorry, bye. All right, I'm gone. Later. <laughs> Where are you going? It's like, well, the guys are doing the thing. It's like, what do they do? On- they don't do anything on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> They've never done anything on Friday yeah. for the past three and a half years. <laughs> Man, this power armor is shit. So we're playing Fallout 4 because uh, Bethesda's been in the news. Is that uh, what this is? Yeah, it's survival mode. I thought so. this was GTA and they just yep. added in, you know, Detroit. Yeah, they added Iron Man mode to GTA. Waiting on a rock star. I'd fully support that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is survival mode, different than the regular mode. You gotta eat and you gotta sleep. There's no quick save, no fast travel, none of that stuff. So. Wow, that sounds like they've taken all the fun out of it. Uh... Well, it's definitely not an Adam type of game. Hello, Crow. That doesn't care that I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) And let me shit on this crew. It's like payback, right? For all the uh, many times that birds have shit on humans. The one time a human shits on a bird. Yeah, I think that's pretty the, hard to do. Do you think pretty that's the first thing too. that the Wright brothers did when they got significantly airborne? Like, airborne. all right. Now all, for revenge. <laughs> all right, lean lean this over a little bit. I'm going to start I'm going to start sh- shotgunning shit turds out my backside at the nearest flock of crows. Shit turds. <laughs> um Anyway, this is unmodded as well. It was modded at one point, but got unmodded thanks to Bethesda. Well, I wonder what reasons that are related to the news. I wonder what Bethesda could have come out with recently that would that would make them want to unsupport every mod available <laughs> in the game. You know, the only way I could possibly see them doing something like that is if they came out with some sort of paid mod service. But they'd never be so stupid to try something like that again. The last time they did that, it ended up being in a total failure, and everybody hated them for a bit. Anyway, what does Bethesda come out with this week? I bet it's new DLC for Fallout 4. You're right. It's a lot of new DLC. We're actually getting tons of new DLC. There's like 50, 100 pieces of DLC coming in. That's so uh, many DLC. We even get two or one DLC for free. Really? <laughs> yeah. That sounds yeah. like the deal of a lifetime. Yeah. Is it like Dawn Guard and stuff? It's exactly like Dawn Guard, oh, except man. instead of getting a storyline, the Pip-Boy is a different color. That's even better. Which it already right? was for me. So, like, I'm not really getting much of a deal out of this. Damn. What a shame. Yeah, man, I, I can't wait. Uh, you know, I, I thought Don Guard was cool. I thought Far Harbor was okay. But a Chrome Pip-Boy? Yeah. That's, they got, they that's really, really got it sorted Chrome? Out. Yeah. That sounds lore-breaking to me. Let's ask Andrew. Oh, wait, he's not here. I'm no, sorry. it's Thomas, Adam. It's Thomas. This week. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, yeah. Andrew, Andrew said, yeah, I'll be on the podcast tonight. And I asked him, I was like, so you're going to be on the podcast tonight? Like, nah, man, I'm busy. <laughs> what I really like about this is there's like very little diversity of opinion on whether or not the execution of this is really poor. Even if you agree with it, like the principle of the idea. Uh, and it's kind of a shame because like for a lot of years, like one of the things I've been saying is how great, you know, Bethesda's modding tools are. Like the, the Skyrim creation kit mm-hmm. uh, is excellent. Uh, and I never got into Fallout modding, but, uh, like, I assumed that the GEC was equally excellent. Uh, you know, support for, like, this, like, free... Mods are almost like an open source thing in a sense of the word, in terms of the, the way the business model works. That kind of stuff is great. This stuff is less great. I don't like this stuff at all. Yeah. The, uh... Are you getting a lot of traffic on the road? I hear oh, cars. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Adam. <laughs> Is there a bike? Is there a bike dude yet? Oh man! So I suppose, in the interest of being unbiased, this guy had a fun night. Um, With that, <laughs> it's hard to say who drew the short straw there, really. Yeah. Bethesda tried to introduce paid mods on Steam a number of years ago, and uh, 2015 was it? immediately shot down by the community. I think probably about 
uh, 2015. They're about yeah, it was. And uh, so anyway, that uh, they kind of they kind of ran away from that idea for a little bit. Oh, I ran out of fusion cores. Um, so now they've kind of uh, reintroduced uh, a paid service for that type of thing in the name of uh, Creation Club, where they allow, um, I guess, curated content from the community, i.e., mods, but not mods. Wink, wink. Uh, to be uploaded to their service and then can be paid for with uh, Bethesda bucks or whatever they're calling it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that that they can be exchanged. I think they, it's like right now the cheapest um, pack you can get is like $8, and that's like 500 coins or something. To be fair, they missed golden opportunities to name their, their in-app purchases, like the in-app like, like currency, either uh, yep. septums. Or caps. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a that was a missed opportunity there, Bethesda. Nick, yeah. you know, when they try again in two years, that's what they'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. And so, yeah. and so anyway, uh, I bet there's a, a an outpost that needs saving. Probably, man. Preston Gravy. Oh, sweet, my favorite character. Mm-hmm. Did you just say pressed in gravy? Yep. <laughs> That's not nice. Which is just Have how you, you a look- phone call with him. Which is I've, so that- I've never watched any of the Fallout Four. Yeah. Oh well, they do a, like a phone. There's like I saw this thing online. It was like someone did an entire phone call with just Preston Garvey, like lines. Like they just had like the soundboard of all the mm-hmm. shit he says. <laughs> He's uh, not a very good character. Although I do like his hat. I like his gun. I also like his hat. It's a shame he broke it. <laughs> no, no, that's what ha- that's like a cow's like. He got shot in right? the right, bullet yeah. stuck that's the side to he his fell, head. Fell asleep on. It's a good thing that the know, what what rim wasn't for uh, blocking yeah. out the sun. Uh, God, the up. sun's so bright. If only there was something that could block it. Well, he could also turn his hat. <laughs> yeah, but then he'd look really silly. He would look really silly indeed. Uh, so, Aaron, another question for you. Yeah. Uh, so if if let's say I wanted to. Let's say there was a website out there that already had a a, 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 a colossal amount of, of mods on it for free that were of higher quality than the ones presented on Bethesda, uh, Bethesda Creation Club or whatever it's called. That's right, Creation um, Club. And in a hypothetical situation, let's call this Nexus. This website Nexus? Is yeah. that a good name for it? Yeah. So we'll call it Nexus. Perfect name. So let's say that then this website Nexus has a bunch of mods I can have for free. Can I still have access to these mods for free instead of using Bethesda's bullshit? I'm sorry. Creative uh, Creation Club. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it makes it makes no sense. Like it... Like, everything that they have available on their service is, like you said, available elsewhere, generally better, uh, for free. And so, it, I don't know why, I mean, other than, like Thomas mentioned before we started, like, if you're on PS4, which I guess didn't, before this didn't have mods, like, Sony kind of yeah. vetoed that. Basically, uh, uh, I think Sony made it, if mods were to be enabled in your game, then you'd have to pay a developer fee for every person who submits mods for yeah. like if it was a real why are they so backwards about that they're japanese <laughs> jesus just a bit of casual racism coming from no Thomas. That's no that, racism. that's like japanese video game industry nintendo doesn't allow anything on their well, consoles fair enough so, yeah actually so... that's a good statistic only comes across <laughs> as being majorly racist um, it doesn't present any superiority at them therefore not racist there's also well, it does. It presents us as being well. No, it doesn't. Well, uh, racism this is, this is, not, is cult- racism is not just about being uh, superior. It's also about being inferior. So if you present them as being inferior, this isn't what we know about. Yeah. <laughs> also, this is, this is true. <laughs> this is just the video game industry. <laughs> Four uh, white guys sit around talking about the ins and outs of racism. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't think that uh, racism is a big deal at all. I'm white and I'm in a privileged first oh, world country. Please, <laughs> please, let's not talk about it. I, I don't see it as being a big problem. Obviously, it's a big problem. That was a joke. What was it? it was I'll a do a Philip DeFranco hurt my neck. <laughs> Um, yeah. It was that was entirely a joke to poke fun at people who think like that. Hence the silly voice. Um, in case those of you out there who don't get sarcasm. Anyway, it make it's a completely backwards thinking to establish over the years a very thorough modding community. Yeah. And give the tools to the modding community to make very elaborate mods. Of, uh, One of the main reasons the games are still as active. Killed as well. while I'm doing this. 
and then and then yeah and then completely you know retcon basically the entire system and make people pay for it you're almost at a core there Aaron. yeah i was trying to lug this to a spot where i could whatever i'll leave it here <sighs> and so yeah it, it it's completely stupid i don't know it's a, a stupid fucking system and uh, you know i hope it fails because it's it it yeah, won't if it does succeed it's not going to set a very good precedent for Plus, the rest of the gaming industry i don't know if we if, if we've like really emphasized the fact this fact yet but the mods themselves that are available on this thing are not nice they're not good they are in all they are so far at least from what i've seen in the first couple of days and i haven't used this system at all but from the reports i've been getting uh they're they're just like skins new skins for your power armor new skins for your pit boy new skins for your weapons which yeah, well, is not... that, that's that's ultimately what it is. It, it, it's you know, what has made the modding community so great is that you know it's it's sometimes it's skin mods, sometimes it's new models, sometimes it's quest mods, sometimes it's completely new areas. I mean, yeah. l let's look at, at, at a lot Star. of those things are not ca not possible with Creation Club. Yeah, it's, it's just skins basically and new furniture. So it's it's they wanted to bring in microtransactions into Fallout 4, but they didn't want to call them fall, uh, microtransactions because they knew that microtransaction has the stink of, of we don't like this with the game industry, and yeah. it's correct because microtransactions are mostly sucky. So it says, I know, we'll ruin mods. Yeah. That's what we'll do. We'll drag mods down to the dirt with us. It's pretty disappointing. The uh, And it's also very difficult. It would be different, perception-wise, if it was like a new company and they were starting their own thing and they started this because mm -hmm. it's very hard to introduce a shitty concept into something that's not shitty. Like, much harder than it is to start out with a shitty concept. Like, look at Street Fighter V. That thing's a fucking mess. And the reason it's such a fucking mess is because the other Street Fighters aren't a fucking mess. It's because the fifth one was. Yeah. The uh, It's very hard. Like, once you make something that was already good shitty, you disappoint a lot of people. Yep, Including it's all a of terrible, us. terrible system. Yep. It'd be like if, like, it'd be like if YouTube came out with a system and says, all right, you know all those videos that you're getting for free that we don't have any hand in making? You know, Philip DeFranco, PewDiePie, uh, those two brothers who Fine prank brothers. people. Yeah, oh. those guys. Well, whoever. Yeah. Uh, the Rooster Teeth, whoever you want to, whoever you want to name. All those videos. Well, you, we're going to bring out a service where you pay for videos. Oh, okay, well, who's going to be on it? We're, well, we're going to be making our own. There's going to be basically uh, tutorial videos on, uh, on on nail clippings. All right, well, can I still watch Rooster Teeth and PewDiePie and them for free? Oh, yeah, that'll still be available for free. I'm going to go with the free version that's superior, thanks. Yeah, really, though. Yeah, and, and, you know, on the opposite side of that, I'm all for supporting mod creators. Because oh, for yeah. Because for a long, totally. long time, you know, mod creators really haven't, gotten paid much it's always been like a free ecosystem to i agree uh, re, you know rejuvenate the life of a game um you know maybe and i would pay individual mod if some guy said hey i made this mod like uh, of indigo in skyrim is one of my favorite ever mods uh, he's a uh, he's an npc that you can add into the game really really high quality good voice acting really good you know quest line that's associated with him really solid mod if he came out and said, hey, I, you bought, you had this mod for free, would you consider giving some money to my Patreon or whatever? I would give yeah. him some money. That's the open source model. It's worked for years in software yeah. development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh... Yeah, so what this system should be is, yes, curated mods by Bethesda, but with, like, a donate button. Yeah, exactly. Not, not a... The option, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, you can still pay the mod. You know, I think the way, that, the way it works now, Andrew was uh, saying, is Bethesda pays the modder up front, like a fixed fee or something and then they make you know bank on it from everyone buying yeah. it thereafter which is yeah. fucking terrible because yeah. if your mod's popular you don't get any benefit from it being more yeah. popular yeah and if your mod's awful then it doesn't matter either yeah so yeah, what exactly, it should be yeah. is an entirely like curated system like oh we think this mod will make a lot of money let's put it on our site then bethesda takes like a 30 or 40 percent cut of the <laughs> profit I, I i i think uh, the best way for bethesda to do it is a uh, sort of twofold where it's they they curate it in that people submit mods to go on their like front mm -hmm. yeah. and Bethesda just has people that review it and say okay yeah, so it works and it doesn't like mods. destroy the game yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that's that's all they check they get like 50 cents off the sale kind of like a steam overhead thing yeah, yeah. Uh, everything else goes to the creator 
and the benefit in it is that they can see what people are doing and they can get talent out of it. Yeah, I like right? all of that. Uh, everything yep. you said, and especially that last bit, because that's a really good way to find game designers. Because these days, and it's oh. a good way for game designers to get out there. Because these days, you can't if you have like the you know the game industry is so competitive, you can't get in on an idea for a game. They have too many ideas as that, it is. The, that that would have flown back in the eighties. Back in more. Exactly. Now now you actually have to show that you can make something. And so modding is a great way to do that if you don't want to, you know, start a game from scratch, which a lot of people, you know, don't want to do. Yeah. It's an unlike, exhaustive unlike, process. Unlike writing a book, creating a video game is actually quite hard. Yeah, it's very unlike like writing a book. <laughs> well c- comparatively <laughs> <like> writing, writing <laughs> So many authors. All the authors that watch your podcast just shut it off. Can... <laughs> Bye, Adam. Yeah. Watching this in a week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't watch this show. Um, how dare you insult me? No, but uh, what I mean is, like, take. Uh, take... You're saying it's it's oh, a, it's oh, a yeah. higher skill. Whoa. You can. It's easy to write a <laughs> shitty book. It's not easy to write a shitty it. book. Yeah. It's not even that easy to create a shitty video game. No, because there's scratch. so much that you had to do. You've got to do okay. stuff. Unless you buy like, it all, unless you yeah, pre-bought assets, yeah, like a Unity, assets, yeah, like a Unity, Unity store. But yeah. like, if I was gonna like, e- like let's say like I'm writing a book, besides the the copy editor and and you know my personal editor and, and that sort of thing, the publisher and that kind of stuff. There's maybe like like five people involved with a book, but only one person's doing the bulk of the work, which is the writer. Although that's arguable, we'll not get into that. With a video game, unless it's like a Le- Dustin Elysium's tale, or one or 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 uh, under uh, Undertale or whatever, mm-hmm. where it's it's one guy making the game, or uh, any Scott Carson's games, you got at least twelve people, eleven people, or whatever, making making these games. Yeah, Somewhere exactly. up to you know teams of hundreds of people, like with bigger AAA games like Destiny, they're actually quite hard to put off. Yeah, no one's gonna make a game just to show that they can make a game. Unless it's something like you can make a, like some small models and stuff like that. But mods are a, one of the most successful ways to get into it because that way you can get people. To, I can make a small game in mm-hmm. like Java in like a few minutes. Yeah, but yeah. it's gonna be hard to get people to play it. That's and yeah. review it, whereas a mod, it's fucking a, it's a joke. That's how uh, it's Under- not easy, but you that, know what I mean. That's how Undertale yeah. was created because the guy who created Undertale, uh, Toby Fox. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he started out. Undertale actually started off his life as a mod, a Halloween mod for Earthbound, which is yeah. very obvious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then he just took some of the music and ideas he had for that mod, and he made his own game out of it. Yeah. Because I think Nintendo didn't take too kind. Con- I can't remember what the story is. I, I but then something happened. And he made his own game. It's one of the most successful indie games ever. It's certainly one of the most beloved. I, I think it was uh, Mother 3, where that was never officially released in the West. The only, I think, way it was playable was a fan-created translation, and he made a mod for that. And the entire thing got shut down by Nintendo. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. I played it on yeah. detail. <laughs> the, Undertale's uh, great. Mm-hmm. One of the best... Now, I, I, I don't think Undertale is a great game so much as it is a bold step forward in the medium of storytelling. Mm. And I think it's, yeah, like you say, it's a, a great example of like what you know the power of modding is to do. Because it's so easy to convince someone to play a mod. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, you already own this game that you like. Yeah, try this little addition to it. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we obviously, we've played a bunch of stuff with mods in this show before. Aaron, can, uh, you, cut to a, can you cut to a clip of us playing the... Uh, what? Uh, oh, Oblivion. Oh, yeah, Oblivion and having Adonis Philly or whatever, like, glitch in the water or whatever. <laughs> having in that. Um, oh. Can you imagine going swim? Oh, oh 10 Fuck. out of 10, Wow, man. good job, Rory. Uh, can you imagine going oh. swim? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! You shot him. You shot him through his boobs. He has an arrow sticking through his nipples. Look at that! Hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I love all the cuts you make me do. In the I end. think the first mod I would do if I if I ever play Fallout Four you? is I'm changing the dog oh. to some hilarious tiny one, <laughs> like a corgi. It's gonna be like one of the Queen's corgis. Oh yeah. yeah. Does she have multiple? She oh yeah, two. she has like. Well, she used to have a lot. She used to have, like, seven. Yeah, I think several have passed away. Yeah. And they're Queen... not giving her new ones. No, <laughs> not Queen... giving her new ones? Well, the Queen loves corgis. Yeah. It's her favorite dog breed. Why don't they get her some new ones? Well, she's, she'll she, be she's dead. 92 and she'll be, she'll be dead. <laughs> That's it? 
we can assume. I gotta assume there's a lot of more like uh, excess spending going on than just a few extra corgis over there in the uh, across the pond. I gotta assume they're making some more financial well, I'll, 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 I'll give Liz a shot. I'll see what else she's spending her allowance on across <laughs> the pond. <laughs> um, That's what they say, right? That's England is that, across that the is, pond. That is exactly what it is. I've okay, never heard good. you say it before. Yeah, I've is, never been to England. You, you pronounced it no? so well. No, I've never been to England. The uh, jolly old England. I don't know why I'm doing that. Please they, don't. Uh, I might never go to England. I don't know. I'm considering Suck at never people going. from England. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, is there anything else we want to say about these mods before we move on? To they suck. Else? That's it. That's the a creation, stupid thing. The creation club or whatever. Wasted potential. Yeah. Again. It could it could have been so much. Again. Do you, how many people do you think they pulled off? Scott, you know. Uh, Elder Scrolls and Elysium's Tale, or whatever they're calling the next one. Elder Scrolls Electric Boogaloo. Literally uh, nobody. Or are they not making Elder Scrolls? No, they literally pulled nobody off it because one dude made this in an afternoon and said, Look what Yeah, I but made. he was the same dude who made all the dungeons in Skyrim. Uh, I, probably I remember, I remember watching a, a, did, did, you, blah, 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 a did You Know Gaming uh, for Skyrim, and it was hosted by uh, Boogie2988, uh, who was a really good YouTuber. And he was saying, did you know that uh, what, the two guys were responsible for all of the dungeons in Skyrim? And I'm like... That explains one, that's... why they're so linear and yeah. uh, copied but, off of one another. But one, I mean, that's impressive. Two guys were able to do all of the dungeons. But yeah. on the other hand, like, Bethesda, gifts, your your but, game is about exploring dungeons. Get if more people If on... there's anything that could use some work in Skyrim... Well, there's a bunch of things. But you said, one of you main... said like exactly this last weekend. Did I, I actually? No, yes. Adam talking about the dungeons yeah, oh, last weekend yeah. in Skyrim. Uh, it needs to be better. Has, has anyone here ever played Game Dev Tycoon? Yes. No. No. Aaron. Uh, okay, so Aaron, mm-hmm. this is like if they were making a large game and assigned one aspect of the development process to the same guy every single time, <laughs> and didn't like his his he was worked to 150 or 200, whatever the maximum is, and they still gave him work to do. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. Well, everyone else was kicking back, only at like thirty percent. Yeah, every, he was training everyone else to do like you know vacation or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played that game in a long ass time. I played it uh, this week. Yeah, yeah. That was a pretty fun game. Wasn't there a bug in that game? That if you if you pirated the game, not yeah. a bug. It's you would intentional. You would get. You wouldn't be able to win. No. Well, there's no way to win. Well, right? it, if, really. if you pirated the game, then people in oh, your game people would pirate your games in yeah, the you'd game. You'd go bankrupt. Yeah. And everyone was like, why does everyone keep pirating my games? And it's like, well, we know you pirated the game, because that's... Also... intentionally put that in there. The, oh, also, like, Alana Moore said is gonna want something. We're gonna, wanna, gonna wanna talk to you. He's like, Ray! I'm Ray, thinking, Ray, I'm Ray, thinking, Ray, fuck Ray. this survival mode. I, it's a free ride. I, I realized there's the other day. Nailed it, Adam. Uh, this isn't the only podcast I listen to or watch. I'm oh. sorry, gentlemen. Oh man, <laughs> no, this isn't the only one. No, I'm so sorry. I watch a sports one and stuff as well. Okay. We could do a sports as long one. as it's not like Skip and Shannon. We're cool. No, no, this is the <laughs> Skip and Shannon. Uh, but uh, the world's. Oh my god. Yeah, go ahead. This is like a Toronto sports one, go and uh, I've been working with them trying to do like some animations and stuff for uh, a couple of their like clips that cool, are very yeah. much not sports related but um, funny yeah uh and i didn't realize until i was listening Man, to one of them no, that no. uh one of the hosts is Lance morsette's son oh really yeah and That's so like badass. i've talked to him and i have his email so i'm friends with like Alanis morsette's cool. kid I'm like you're of like, course you're like, in canada it's not, you're <laughs> like two degrees of separation from Alanis morsette Alanis morsette's awesome yeah. yeah it's pretty ironic thomas hey <sighs> yep so uh, good mugging. We didn't really talk about this when it was relevant. Really nervous. Um, I shut no, that down not. for a second. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But we can bring it up now. People know about it. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I guess a couple weeks ago there there was a, or I guess it's been ongoing for a long time. But a couple weeks ago is when it kind of came to fruition. Yeah. Um, there was an issue a couple of months back. It might have been earlier or later last year. I'm not entirely sure on I, the timeline. I think it was February. Uh. Okay, and um, anyway, there's a pretty big YouTuber, and you've probably heard of him if you've heard of us, uh, H3H3, who were being sued for uh, using uh, too much of somebody else's YouTube video for, I guess, reactionary purposes or review purposes, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. And uh, anyway, the guy decided that they were going to sue them, saying that he was like, 
repurposing his content or something to that effect. I'm not entirely sure on the uh, the jargon that was used, mm. but I guess basically copying his video, um, and I guess being um, what's the word like derogatory or negative towards him. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the guy's name who who sued him was called Matt Haas. Yeah. And basically, he alleged, um, uh, just reading the the cliff notes, yep. I can remember the guy's name. That you're essentially right. Uh, actually, I'm not going to add to that because Aaron is completely yeah. correct. But... Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So uh, the the, like the lawsuit <laughs> the lawsuit uh, wrapped up, and H three H three won. So that's it's a, a victory for fair use. Definitely, and whatnot, yeah. Which, which is, is great. That's uh, great. Yeah, and they seem pretty happy about it. A lot of people are pretty happy about it. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, didn't hear a lot of like, people on the other guy's side. No. Uh, yeah, and it, it didn't really... I don't know, I'm not entirely certain on this individual. It, it seemed kind of weird because the video that he made was some sort of like parkour video yeah. that was kind of... He tried to pick up chicks with parkour. Yeah, it was a little kind of sketchy. Um, and then... <laughs> was it? I mean, you tried to... I, you, gotta, you gotta explain more his process. What What did he do? I, well, I didn't oh, watch shit. the video. Uh, Wait, so basically, Aaron, you watched the he, video, Basically, he said like, uh, watched a little while ago, so I can't remember all of it. But he basically said like, you know, um, we, we should date or whatever. And he's like, well, if you want to date me, you got to catch me. So then he starts like parkour chasing this woman. Oh, well, that's, that's in not very uh, in very stupid fashion. Yeah, and you know that he that catches sh- her. That screams. Wait, so she runs? Yeah. I thought it's like he's running. Uh, he's, he's like, running. hey, if you want to date me, you got to catch me. And she's like, her. oh well. He's running after her. Wait, it's a. That screams so that's uh, not... sexual assault to a me, little if I'm bit. honest. But then he catches her, and then she's like, all right, I guess you can date me now. Well, and this like, sounds... But, then you get, but now you got to catch me. And then he starts running, and she chases oh, him. Oh, this sounds staged as can be. Oh, it's super... Well, yeah, it's it an entirely, like a... entirely staged video. Yeah. But uh, Hey, girl, I want to date you. Well, sir, you cannot <laughs> date me unless you... You coo- got it. Coo- Catch me with your Parker skulls. You got it. Note. <laughs> oh man, she wrote that on her hand. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, Ethan, the guy, Ethan and, and Hila from H3H3 uh, cool. reacted to the video and were honestly like, generally, they, they're kind of vicious towards a lot of stupid Are they content vicious? online. Well, yes, Adam, if you don't watch H3H3 and you are unfamiliar with them, yes. Alright, fair enough. Uh, and I think to this guy they were fairly kind. They 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 tore apart his video, but then at the end they were like they were like this guy seems all right. Like you know, give him a chance. His his content is well produced, and and so on and so forth. And then uh, so out of nowhere comes lawsuit, and uh, this guy well, starts claiming a, that the content first was video stolen. Was taken down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it, it it's absolutely a retarded scenario that uh, this was even a lawsuit that was allowed to carry on as long as it did yeah and uh, the the monetary value that he was trying to claim was also ridiculous well that's like yeah. when jim sterling was sued by was it, homicide. yeah james Ramon, is that the dude's name for what was it like 20 million dollars it was a, <laughs> a, a, like a comically large amount yeah, <laughs> yeah. and apparently if i remember correctly cuz jim came out with a video explaining the like his side of the argument after the whole thing because he won his or the he didn't win his lawsuit it was dismissed uh, with prejudice um, and he came out and he said that the level of distress that the digital homicide was claiming that Jim caused, caused them was the equivalent of uh, I think I think the guy like Jim's lawyer said is the equivalent of like when a woman loses her child or soldiers exhibiting PTSD like that's the level of stress that that this dude claimed that Jim caused him. So this is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't understand, like, there's been so many times where these these content creators, whether it's a game, like a, a low-level game company or a fellow YouTuber, who abuse the copyright system and then take them to court over these, you know, fair use issues, and they lose seemingly every time. I don't understand why they think they can, what's the point anymore. It's honestly detrimental to your PR because that's all it was he was trying to do PR control yeah. it's detrimental to that because now he's not known as the dude who made a silly you know parkour you know rape video or whatever he was doing that it wasn't a parkour rape parkour creepy pickup chick video mm. it was because uh, I don't want to get sued by this guy thank you uh, yeah, I was just about to say it <laughs> It was a creepy parkour pickup chick video. It's he's now known as the dude who 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 sued 
page three hates. I mean, three. let's be honest. If he's going to sue anybody over this, he's going to sue like fifty other YouTubers before he gets DOS. Yeah, yeah. you also. I mean, suing H three H three is probably a bad idea, anyways, because they tend tend to have a lot of like goodwill within the community. Yeah, um, yeah. they have a lot of friends. That, that's yeah, yeah. So that's a, it's a poor decision. Like, even if I thought. That we, for some reason, we had some, like, a legitimate, legally pursuable grievance against H3H3, H3, I'd probably say we shouldn't pursue it. No. <laughs> like, to be honest, even if it was legitimate, which this is, you know, not. I, in fact, if H3H3 H3 came out and, you know, did one of his videos about our videos and said how, like... Yeah, I'd be pretty, I, pretty, I feel pretty, pumped. I'd, pretty happy I, well, I'd be pretty cool. Yeah. like, oh man, H3H3, H3, H3, even if he tore it to fucking free, treads, to be honest. Like, which he would. No, no, would, not even if. It, yeah, when. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, inevitably, if he's going to talk about it and it's not, you know, I should say, if they're going to talk about it. Might be more problems it. associated than that if they decide to do a video about us. They've run. They've gotten to the bottom of the internet. If they've yeah, exactly. This. Yeah, they somehow Generally, they were playing the YouTube game and they stumbled across. I don't think our we're video. that cringe, but look at this right. piece of shit. What? I'm just saying, like, like that would be I their response like to, to our to our stuff. Yeah, yeah. Feel free, Ethan. Yeah, do it. Uh, yeah. So comes with the anyway, you know, seal of approval. <laughs> all wrapped up. Uh, I'm glad they won. Solid win for Fair Oh, I'm so. glad they won too. They it's totally, a win they totally for deserved. Fair use. I mean, like. Was it uh, was it Total Biscuit was also sued over Fair Rice uh, Fair Rice Fair Rice sounds delicious <laughs> Fair use issues by 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 somebody like a couple years ago back in like 2014 he was, he was. I think this is true yeah, yeah. I kind of I kind of no, get no, that story he, he was uh, sued by a video game developer because they said his comments on the game are the reason the game didn't sell well. As opposed to the game just being crap, which is what he it was, showed it was, in his video. It was a wolf game, wasn't it? You get you got the you were wolf or something. I can't yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But you're you're thinking of the right thing. But also like you were uh, wolf. The the thing about critics is uh, it's a legitimate part people. of being a critic is you can get people not to buy things sometimes. Uh, imagine that. Uh, a lot of critics, in fact, imagine not, free speech. Certainly right? not my mandate as a critic, but a lot of critics make it their mandate to recommend purchases and recommend not purchases and save their users money which i think is yeah it, it is part of actually total biscuits mandate i think I could so be where then do that. you draw the line of slander uh well s slander has to i believe has to be like, not true has to be false yeah, yeah. so yeah. me saying yeah but I, I can say let, let's pick it like like let's say donald trump i can say Donald Trump is, in my opinion, the worst president that America has ever received because that is my opinion. However, if I were to say Donald Trump uh, has anal sex with Putin, that is technically slander because I have no proof that he actually has been having ever sexual relations. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but so how do you how do you decipher like that, sarcasm for effect? That's and, up to the judge. And yeah, that's up to that's a. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's most, a decision to be made. Mo most times, case. especially if it's somebody public like that, they'll let comments like that slide because if they mm -hmm. were going to cackle every single instance yeah. of slander, yeah. they'd they be would in the be... courtroom all day. Yeah, yeah. pain in the nose for attorney's well, fees. Well, actually, it's funny that you mentioned the President of the United States there. It took almost 24 hours after an announcement there last week the President made yeah. for the White House to come out and explain that what he had said was sarcasm <laughs> at one point because the news media were like, that sounded like sarcasm, but he's the president, so he shouldn't be using sarcasm. No, the one person on earth who shouldn't be like my my ninety two year old grandmother should be using. That's a good sound for dad to make when he's doing this. It, it just means uh, that I, Windows Defender is there's no threat detected on my laptop, which is nice. And it was scanned two times. And will now restart. No, I did that yesterday. Wonderful. Well, there was updates, Aaron. I I do I do hate that Windows does the notification noise with the yeah. Windows Defender yeah. summaries. The, uh, but I hate a lot of things. Fuck off, Phil. So that's okay. Um, or would rather an operating system that you have to build from the ground up, but that ultimately would work better. <laughs> I'm sure I've had a long fucking week, Thomas. You don't even have to be here. <laughs> I wanted to leave my house, so I went to another person's house. Thank you. Just trying to make fun of the people who host the show. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> He doesn't get... We don't get to hear him make fun of us when he's watching. Yeah, he's well, watching. He's always mocking us. they got lots of great lines. We're all, we're missing them all. Shoving his face full of peanuts. Look at that piece of shit. <laughs> Flub another line at him. That'll make you more attractive. Yeah, generally, I listen to your show. I don't watch it very much because oh. I listen to yeah, YouTube work. a lot. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and basically, when there's something particularly 
comical or yeah, mixed up. Yeah, you are. I take I, I, I go back, watch it, or I take a clip and I show my coworkers. Well, especially uh, now because like we're not the podcast now, the visual, it's a video game. Yeah. So it doesn't like it's there and it's good to have, but it doesn't like accompany the actions. Like it's not like we're moving with our hands telling a story or something. Yeah, much. it's not like we're in VR and we see everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas like there was stuff you would legit miss in the studio podcast yeah. if you didn't watch it visually. Mm. Can I talk very quickly about a, a thing that I saw C, uh, CNN do the week that kind of got them in a little bit of trouble? Okay, sure. I'm so always down for that. You've heard... Uh, have you guys all heard what's happened in Texas? The floods. The, this, this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There have been terrible floods last week uh, from Hurricane... Harvey. Thank you. And all of Texas was... All of Houston and... and, and, all, and you know, Corpus Christi. Yeah, thank you. And a lot of places Galveston. along the course. They're all like underwater at this point. Mm-hmm. And it's... So I think what, what there's a there's a mega church like TV evangelist down there called Jim Olsten. Yeah, Jim uh, Olsten. Uh, Joel, uh, Joel Olsten. Joel Olsten. Joel Olsten. That's it. And yeah, it's it's in downtown Houston, but it's part of the elevator. I used to live in Houston, so I, that's why I know. Oh, okay, I remember this guy. I, heard, I used to hear about this guy back in the day because there aren't there aren't that many famous televangelists. No, right. Anyway, he he has a he's like a multi millionaire because for some reason oh, he runs tri- like an empire. He tricks people into giving him money when he he by saying he'll cure them of their cancer and they'll give them all their money, even though he all they're really doing is just giving some like skeezy dude all their money. That explains why I saw him on Reddit earlier today. Anyway, so he has this huge mega church, and people came to his church seeking shelter from the storm, and he That's said awesome. no, and he locked the doors. He wouldn't let people in. You know, a, a church. Stop. Doing that. They can't install updates. No, can't install updates. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so he won't, um, he cannot, he, he would not allow people into his church for shelter for the storm. Like a lot of other churches, you know, Roman Catholic, Anglican, mosques, uh, uh, synagogues, open their doors and let people come in and take uh, refuge from the storm. Mattress stores, Walmarts, grocery stores, any building that was above floodwaters was letting people in, yeah. whether they were told they could or not, just because... They're would, human. Yeah, it's a decent thing to do. This guy... Can I also just, like, sort of add to a point you made, just real quick, yeah. just to give this some context? His uh, televised sermons are seen by over 7 million viewers weekly, which, for television, is good. Yeah, like, that's amazing. For, especially for a TV... This isn't the Big Bang Theory. You no. You know what I mean? Like... So, and his church can probably see, like, what, like, like it's like a stadium-sized church? 16,000 people. Yeah. So it's easily Jesus. enough people for, you know, to room to fit people, you know, just to hold off the worst of the storm. And anyway... So then, like, CNN was reporting on this guy and saying how bad he was, and he is, you know, he is bad for, for doing this. He's, he's selfish, and he's, he's awful. And put the picture they put up on on the screen, they show who Joel Osteen was, was Tim the fucking Tool Man from Tool Time. <laughs> to be fair, they look alike. They do well, look alike. Okay, to be... <laughs> the, the picture I saw of him on Reddit was... Um... Joel Osteen looked like he about to cast a novice level spell at you, and it was a side by side with an oblivion mage. <laughs> it was that's it was a, perfect. That sounds about as good as when I ran an election and they looked up my name and just took the first one that looked like a politician instead of me. Oh wow! <laughs> On NTV, <What? laughs> I forgot about that. That was great. I could I still look it up because it's not even spelled right, and it's like, oh, this is a Thomas Shea who's a they lawyer. They spelled with an H. Oh yeah, and yeah. Shea with like S H A Y. Oh really? Basically. He's like oh, a, wow. a lawyer in Connecticut. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, he does look more professional than me, but it's not me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, in TV. Yeah, yeah nice. CBC got my picture because it was on the friggin' website. Good, good for them. Yeah, yeah. Well done, CBC. And TV, CBC is the local branch of our of Canada's national news outlet, uh, which is oh, Canadian man. Broadcast Corporation. Oh, and tr- enlarged. I got a legendary lead pipe. <laughs> And NTV is, is the is local just, branch of our local news yeah. outlet. And uh, it's, well, it's part of CTV Network. It's true. It's uh, got uh, one time uh, the, I watched them in real time try to spell ambassador because they had this guy on and his title was ambassador and they failed miserably the first time. And then you can actually see it backspace and then try again. Yeah, I and they saw kept on trying forever too. until it disappeared. I saw because uh, they have a. Uh, they have the news on before the news for some reason. It's called First Edition. But yeah. One time I, I saw it and it was called Frist Edition, and then it became Fist Edition, and then First Edition. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like, like literally you, you could do a better time. you could do a better job in your fucking basement. <laughs> like we can do a better job here. This is honestly 
a more much more thought and production is put into Pixel Junkies I than has ever that, been Rory. put into NTV. Can I? Well, yeah, like the guy who anchored NTV for twenty five years is now the host of the CBC Radio Morning Show. And and after mm-hmm. a brief stint at ruining our uh, one of our local radio stations, stations. and all yeah, I can which, think is while he was at that radio station. <clears throat> I was at an award show that he was hosting once, and he left partway through <laughs> to go like report on a story or something. <laughs> That's dedication. He's like, he's like, he's like out talking or whatever, and then I was just like, "Sorry, I have to take this call." While he's on stage hosting the award show, and then he just left. The whole thing, everything. Hang on. It's like, so thank you very much for this award. Uh, I want to <laughs> thank everybody who who nominated no, no, me. No. And hang on, what? The swan down at the lake is giving birth to duckling. Oh my <laughs> god! I gotta go, guys. They're really like everything. Like you know how people always say like stuff's different on islands. Everything you think happens on islands happens on this fucking island. This one. The uh, except anything involving animals that don't live here. The uh, <laughs> well, we do have swans. We do have swans, yes, <laughs> we but we don't swans. have like say kangaroos, which exist on a different island. Yeah, the, yeah, except for all the yeah. Well, like, I was gonna say all the cool things, but then again, Australia has basically every dangerous. Thing yeah, I was like, Australia is like a death trap, really. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> I would not last very long in Australia. Their gun laws there are actually very good, so that's the one thing you don't got to worry about. That's true. Uh, the uh, right. because they had they had a massacre once, and they and they were like, no more fixed of this. It. Well, um, actually, it's funny. No Us and Australia, the two criminal islands. Uh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah. they exported the criminals here yeah. and there. The um, <laughs> people think I've read a theory once. I don't know if it has any validity, but that's why, like you know, Australians call each other mate. Is because they're all all their ants. You know, the first people who came to the island were inmates, and so they just. Oh. But Northern Englanders also say mate. Yeah, and that's why I don't know how true this oh, is. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I, I like that concept. Yeah, I'm me gonna, too. I'm gonna support that as a fact from now on. All right. Well, I would research it first. Before <laughs> no, I... sir. That's a fact. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's not this the is... 2017 way. This is how. Uh, this is how Jordan facts get spread around. This is, Here's no, the thing. This is Jordan how... facts are actually facts. facts, but he present like no, like, they're not. No, Jordan... they're modifications of existing Jordan... facts. Well, Jordan will call it with a theory being like his idea will be. I really don't like America's current gun laws because I think they're really reckless. But what he'll say to us to open the conversation is, you know, boys, guns in America are just like the rad roaches in Fallout. Yeah, he'll say Jordan, what some the obscure thing are you talking about? that like, vaguely resembles. Yeah. But he, once you, you get him to explain it. And, he and now, an hour later. Yeah, an hour later yeah. you figured out that Chad Kroger's not taking his money. So, yeah. so speaking of gun laws, uh, how about... You know, GTA Pew Pew and anything new with that? Oh, yeah. By the way, this is why we have Thomas here, is because he's the only one on this fucking show that can do a segue. (laughs) Oh, no, Andrew can do a segue. Oh, yeah, Andrew does great segues. He just makes up a TV show that doesn't exist and then bridges it into a... (laughs) So, yeah. You mean those weren't real? (laughs) GTA came out He'll just ask you about how interested you are in the said topic, and then that's it. Yeah. Uh, GTA uh, 5 came out with new content for their online... uh, portion of the game and it's called Smuggler's Run and where Ron now calls you twice as often. <laughs> uh, and Better uh, than Lester. Yeah, and gets you to uh, do fly airplanes for him in missions that are honestly not that rewarding monetarily but are still nonetheless pretty cool. They've added in a bunch of new planes. They've added in a P1 Mustang. They've added in uh, a Don't get uh, that on F- Xbox. F1 Saber. They've added in nice. uh, an Apache attack helicopter kind of They've added in uh, a weird blue plane with a propeller over the... It's not always the, blue. What? It's not always blue. The one that I flew was blue. The one we yeah. flew, yeah. Uh, they added in, they've added in a bunch of different stuff. They added in basically Sully's plane from G, uh, from um, Uncharted. Uh, I, I, and, yeah, it's like a so, water bomber type of thing. So all, like. of, all of these missions are about smuggling. When it's really not about smuggling, all of these missions are about killing smugglers. Yeah, so you're... far, I don't think I've ever actually smuggled anything. Well, you're you're taking stuff from the smugglers and then reselling it. We just haven't done many so it's selling thieving missions. Thieving is what we're doing. Yeah, so if you're familiar with the the way uh, GTA has done missions in the past, it's basically you steal stuff and then you resell it. Um, except this is less lucrative because it's almost like it's designed more for group activities than. Uh, potentially soloing stuff. Pre- previously, you could run these missions by yourself. It was possible. Like with the uh, the, the import-export. Uh, import-export or the motorcycle stuff or even the... Um, 
What was the other one they did? The PMCs. Uh, just the, I guess it was just the CEO cargo. This is basically what this is, except the amount of time you have to do it is like halved, and what you have to do is like twice as difficult. Uh, I.e., also, like, some of the new planes don't control well. <laughs> more aim botted a bit. Yeah, uh, it's it's fun. It's great with groups. I mean, we've we've played it a bit. Me uh, minus and Aaron and, and Thomas, another friend of the show, Sandy, play uh, together a couple times a week, and it's really fun. I'm currently in a verbal contract to buy the game. Rory, if you bought it, we'd have we'd have a lot. He has of fun it on. He has it on PC. Yeah, we'll get it for PlayStation. It, yeah, well, I'm me and Devin are both getting it actually All for right. PlayStation. Yeah, because uh, he's bringing his uh, PlayStation back to England. With oh, him, something right the viewers don't understand what the hell I'm talking about, but the, <laughs> that'll be great. I because I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom has got it. <laughs> anyway, it's really fun. It's you know it has its problems, which we'll get into. Um, but. Uh, as far as an expansion go, I guess it's okay content wise. It's I think it's really difficult to like pick a side on every time GTA adds content because someone did the math and figured out that it's like seven hundred and thirty six US dollars to buy everything if you were to buy everything with shark cards. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously like every you, car and every plane. And, yeah, yeah okay. but that that also doesn't really work either because a lot of this stuff. I think that accounts for buying multiple. Um, Hangers, and I think you can only have one, so it's like, oh, okay, yeah. why would you buy one and then so get rid of the other less, one? Yeah, but it's it's less than that. But also, like, you don't technically have to have to buy the shark cards. You can get everything yeah. in the game. It just takes a lot of grinding, and mm-hmm. that's annoying. And the game would ultimately be better if it didn't have microtransactions at all. But at least we have my at least we have microtransactions. Fuck have all this free here. content update anyway. So it's, I mean, we've talked yeah. about this at length on the show. Yeah, different points. Um. So I don't. I, I it's it's fun. I do enjoy it, and uh, I I mean I don't mind a bit of grinding every now and then. And honestly, sometimes in GTA, it's not. It doesn't get super repetitive. You leave it for a little while, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think when we did that last week, we were doing the because last week they had the double money and stuff, and uh, I have no idea how to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like you've been going. Uh, you could check a map. Was there's like PT. Yeah, like the same room over and over again. Local yeah. Map. <laughs> How cool would uh, that be? Somebody mods PT into Fallout 4. I have no idea. Won't get that on the Creation Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we got a new skin for the for Preston Gravy. So all these new missions. Now with giblets. Uh, have they had much of an effect on your GTA bank account? Oh, well, I've bought a bunch of shit. I basically saved up uh, when we were doing the double XP stuff last week for a lot of this crap. And... Uh, yeah, I basically spent it all at this point. <laughs> uh, I think I have about a million dollars left. I but tried. it's it's fun. It's like it's it's always. But good is to... something does something need to be fixed or corrected? Uh, oh man, another beautiful segue. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I, it was a clean segue. I yeah, swear. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh man, do you like having your bank account corrected? <laughs> no, no. It's a solid uh, Andrew segue. <laughs> uh, so you had the inflection on the wrong word. Hey, Adam, do you like having your bank account corrected? <laughs> My it's... favorite one was the Power Rangers one where we had it wasn't we've done two stories on Power Rangers in the podcast over the years, but uh <laughs> just you know two. That? Just two. One, it's, but it's a checklist. We did walking it's, wiki. The first time we did yeah, really though. <laughs> not just for podcast shit, for a whole bunch of shit. Uh uh first time we brought it up. Andrew was like, Aaron, do you like Power Rangers? Aaron was like, no. And he was like, Rory, do you like Power Rangers? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh. Like, it's like, and you were like, who put this on the list? <laughs> I, yeah. now, I think that was the episode that I was not, because I was the one person in the room who probably could have talked to him about Power Rangers. No, because you high-fived my Beetleborgs joke, because I said I wasn't into Power Rangers, but I was really super into Beetleborgs. How do you know this? Uh, I recall I don't that forget. as well, actually. When Rory says it, I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. But I, I wouldn't have remembered it otherwise. Um, so this has been a, a thing that's been ongoing for a little while, and it's it's kind of... It's become it's, it's starting to become a real problem. Um, with Rockstar not being humans when it comes to customer support and uh, issues that they're introducing with the game. Uh, obviously, everybody knows that... Uh, Modding and hacking has been a thing in Jesus Christ. Holy crap! In GTA, and um, I guess recent th- recent uh, changes to the game with with gun running and and smugglers run, they've uh, sort of introduced a new 
I guess, uh, algorithm to detect when people are like artificially inflating or hacking their their bank accounts to add millions and millions of dollars, which is still a thing. And there's still a lot of people that have lots of money that they're not supposed to have. But one of the things that they, I think, added fairly recently was the criminal mastermind, um, I guess, challenge to heists, where if you finish all of the heists on hard without dying your entire party with all the same people, then you get, I think it's uh, $12 million, as well as all the other bonuses that you would normally get. Yep. Well, that's a lot of... That's a lot yeah, of plain just a, money. Imagine how many times we died during that last fucking heist. We're using motorcycles. So, yeah, anyway, they've uh, they've also patched the heist a number we of would... times to prevent a lot of the things that even we did in our heist. To, to be fair... To circumvent that. To be fair, Aaron, yeah. we would, uh, you know, we would get to the very end of the heist. we get through all of the months, we get to that damn bank heist. we get to the very end, and then when we all jump out of the car at the end, one of us would hit a tree and die, and that'd be it, and then you would never hear from me again. I wouldn't come on the show, I wouldn't talk to you on on (laughs) social media, I'd probably eat my own throat out. I don't know how that's even possible, I find a way. Oh man, one of my favorites was, we, we almost made it, and it was like we were jumping down the hill. I fell down the hill, almost died, didn't. Ate, like, some snacks. It yeah. was good. Then tripped over, and he just smashed his head on a rock and was yeah. dead. And you guys were all in the boat. <laughs> yeah, I remember, or I could hear, because Thomas plays uh, with his uh, with his wife watching, and we could hear her on the mic laughing her ass off at Thomas. <laughs> we were all, and I think it was, like, our 15th attempt, too. That was the closest we got. We were like, God damn it! And yeah. like it was a cut of like what, like two million dollars, we ended up getting six hundred thousand or something like that because the police shot all the money. Yeah, it was basically yeah, that was the to. minimum that we could yeah. come out with. Yeah, no, it wouldn't get any lower than that. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, Aaron, to interrupt. So we're really good heisters. Yeah, so this criminal mastermind thing going on, it's a it's a great incentive for players to I guess try this, and a lot of people have been doing it. There's been a lot of like you know strategy guides on how to go about doing it. Maybe even like kind of exploiting or circumventing some of the systems in the game to make the heist easier, and uh, it's it's been a real thing on Reddit and, and online and YouTube and stuff. And uh, anyway, so a couple of posts that I've seen earlier this week. Is it were, possible? Like, have people done it? Yes, people. A lot of people are doing it. There's a lot of screenshots of like, here's the money we got for doing this, and and so on. Uh, but there's a new algorithm that uh, Rockstar has introduced to circumvent people rapidly gaining lots of money is now removing the bonuses people are getting for criminal masterminds. What? So they'll get bit 12, 13 million dollars for doing criminal masterminds and the next day it says your bank account has been corrected minus 13 million dollars. So So I just spend it immediately. <laughs> uh yeah, and people are trying to get in touch with Rockstar about it and the replies they're getting is like They'll say, like, you know, I've tried to get in touch with you guys multiple times, and I keep getting, like, bots. I keep getting, like, auto-replies. Please, like, get in touch. I lost all this money. Like, I have proof that I did this, you know, criminal mastermind challenge. is all on video and so on and so forth. And then it's, like, the reply they get is, like, we corrected your bank account because of money that was incorrectly added. And that, and that's it. It's, like, it, it's like it, Rockstar, you need to fucking wake the hell up and, and listen to the community if you're going to fuck people like this because it's been... it's. It's getting out of hand now. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, if, I, if that was the case, if we ever did it, which we're probably not... I'd like to attempt it. <laughs> we should. Yeah, it would we, happen. That would have to be its own thing. Yeah, it would have to be its <laughs> own thing. There'd have to be some recorded evidence. We'd have, yeah. and we'd have to, like, train for it and everything, too, and read up on the wikis yeah. and guys. And... But imagine Always that, like... bulletproof guys. Yeah. These, are, these are difficult heists to do. Like, Just they're, even normal. Yeah, and, and to make one mistake anywhere throughout and have that completely jeopardize the entire thing. It's not just, like, one person making a mistake. It's four people potentially making a mistake. Yeah. And uh, to get through all of that and make all that, that money, like, to, you know, that reward. And that's a lot of money. That's more than I think any of the shark cards can give you. Uh, yep. The most expensive one's $100, and that'll give you $8 million. Mm-hmm. But that's 10% off right now, don't you know? <laughs> it's always on sale in yeah. some way. Yeah. That was going to make you want to buy it. But then to have that taken away from you, it's like, it's a massive middle finger. Like, and I, I don't even know if Rockstar cares about it at this point. Because it's like, oh man, we can, we'll just, we'll just buy shark cards. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's the same thing, like, that you're seeing now in gun running and, and, and Smuggler's Run. Where they're making AI really hard, and they're making the missions really hard. And they're basically, like, seems like they're piling on the difficulty to make you just get frustrated and buy shark cards. 
I don't know Which if that's... I don't like that. If that's yeah, what it's, they're doing. It's, it's, it's getting real bullshitty now. Like, I know Andrew was against it from day one before it even fucking came out. It, it's getting to a point now where it's like, okay, this is... It's very it's very scammy and scuzzy, but people will kill it, keep playing it because it's GTA. I mean, it's and it's fun. The game is really yeah. fun. We've had, I mean, some of the funnest times I've ever had in GTA have been doing any of the missions. It's, I mean, we spent like two hours the other day, me and Andrew and or me and Aaron and and Sandy and Thomas. We just went to the beach and we just hung out in the beach and <laughs> the virtual beach, the virtual yeah. beach. We just palled around there. I don't know why, but we had fun there, blowing each other up. Yeah. And, Mm-hmm. driving like quads in the water or whatever uh, I, I enjoy going to the airport sometimes because the NPCs will have some helicopters up and yeah. taking the largest plane I can and smashing into them yeah it's wicked yeah. I, I've become mentally unstable according did to did you start GTA. a new what, what? Uh, there was nothing to do in my game because I've literally done all the quests oh, apart okay, from yeah. two that I don't want to do because they kind of they remove something from your inventory that I don't yeah. want to get rid of. I was going to say, why so, did you jump from level 119 to level 3? Uh, well, I'm revisiting Fetus Reinhardt from our Fallout special. Ooh. Yeah. See what see what Fetus is up to. <laughs> this is like a special podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's very annoying. Uh, a, a lot of the shark card stuff. And... Yeah. I forget what this guy looks like. Can you... Can you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot we gave him the mumps. What's it? Uh... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, two plus. I think those commands work for this. Yes, they do. Oh man, that's real slow. Yeah. Stop turning it away, <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. Anyway. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 a good update, but just the reasons behind it are like. Here's the thing, though. If if GTA came, if Rockstar came out and said to me, um, and said all of our shark cards, so like the mega. What the hell just happened here? I just killed them all. Okay. If all of the shark cards, like 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 say the Megalodon shark card, which gives you eight million. Which is normally a hundred. They said that's twelve. That's twenty dollars now. I would buy it, but the shark cards aren't worth it because in order to get any like in order to get any good amount of money, you're gonna have to spend at least fifty dollars on a shark card, probably yeah. close to hundred, because all of the good stuff in the game, all the best cars, all the best warehouses, all the best houses, a yacht, all of that kind of stuff is a over yacht. a million. Probably closer anywhere between two million and five million. Yeah, so, it seems like it's priced just. Just outside of the reasonable, well, the most yeah. reasonable card price, which would be thirty bucks. But if they if they had like a if they if, if the if I could get uh you know four million for twenty dollars, I would I would probably buy a couple of shark cards. But it's not worth it. I'm not spending a hundred dollars to buy in game mm-hmm. items. I'm just not doing it. It's not that's a hundred dollars that could go go towards a completely new game. That's like I could buy. Wolfenstein for that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's Mike, yeah. dude. We got him. Hey, hey. podcast. Hey. Dude, coming by. He's like, oh, better go to Signal Hill. Time to get raid in my face. Waited right for the last minute there, but we got him. Yeah, and I, I don't know who like scaled that that system. Like, you could still have microtransactions. You could still have cards, and it'd be like maybe a million dollars is five bucks, or you know, cheaper. Mm. Why is it? so like ridiculously scaled to be able to buy like one plane or one car in the game is probably going to cost you 70 to 80 real dollars yeah i I don't it's ludicrous i don't think a game should ever be able to have well hey i killed everyone at the farm too uh i was about to say dlc but i'm gonna say like in-game currency that you can purchase um that is sold for a higher amount than the cost of the video game as it is on that current day. So, like, GTA now is still, I think, at, like, probably 69 or $59. Hmm. So, the most they could yeah. sell one for is, like, 60 or 50 bucks. Yeah. I'd consider that reasonable as a max point. Yeah. At 100 that's double the value of the game. Yeah. The yeah. entire game. 
Aaron, you play Fallout a lot yeah. like I play Fallout. Yeah, you're entirely correct there, Tom. Fetus is just trying to save all these people from this hell. It's actually more expensive for us because we're dealing with the, the good old Canuck dollar. Yep. Uh, and it's doing great right now. And uh, so the shark cards are actually worth it. Like a $100 shark card for the state is actually like 110 for us. I, I realized I had a gift card the other day, like partially used. Yeah. And I checked the balance on it and... Uh, like, I'd written the amount on it last time, and I would guess I was checking to make sure that I was still up to date, haven't mm -hmm. used it since. Yeah. And it said, like, 21-something, and now it was up to $26. And it's because the card is in American funds and then turns it into Canadian funds for use in oh, the country. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the amount of money on the card has gone up because our money has become less valuable. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's so it's sad. So, it's so weird. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> so, um... My, I just this isn't on the list or anything, but my cousin was in town a little while ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we went to EB Games because he wanted to find some PS Vita games because he's like the one dude on earth who bought a PS Vita. I Him and Andrew. I was looking to buy one not too long ago, so I could play GTA in my room when I needed to use the TV. Oh yeah, that was my entire goal. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, he 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 actually because he lives out in a, in a very in a kind of small town in the province that we live that doesn't have an EB game. So when he comes into town, he usually brings a lot of games with him that he trades in, and then he gets a couple of new ones. Um, and when he came in, he was like, okay, I got like $100 or, or whatever on my on my my EB games card. Like, I've got 100, like, saved credits or whatever. So he went up to the to the counter. He's like, hi, I'd like to buy whatever the game is for, you know, for Vita. And what do you I like? Use... Can I get for five bucks? And he's like, can I use this? I got. I think I got all close to a hundred dollars on this car. And they were looking. He's like, oh yeah, it looks like you have that. Or well, no, they say actually, um, we can't access your your card uh, because it's expired. Your your account with us is expired. And he's like, oh okay. He's like, so yeah, you're gonna have to pay with real money. He's like, what? So all those games I traded in, I don't have access to that anymore? It's like, we're going to have to renew your subscription with us or whatever. I'm like, this fucking store. The, oh, yeah, uh, it's whole, yeah, it's whole bullshit. Their edge card system. Uh, yeah. I, I, um... So he, he got an edge card for free, and he was able to, or, because it was like, it was a gold level instead of platinum, so he didn't have to pay into it. Yeah. Uh, so he got all of his money back, but still, it was, it, it was for a while, it sounded like they weren't going to give him his money. Man, like, he... people were weird about that. Uh, the university that me and Adam attend, I, uh... Uh, like, I tried to get my transcript once, and they were like, Ah, hey, you owe us 50 bucks for something, so we're not going to release your transcript until really? you give us the money. I was like, well, really? For real? Like, my transcript is things in the past. I owe you 50 bucks in the present. Like, that seems <laughs> like some some bullshit to You should have countered with saying, fix the leaks in the tunnels underneath. Yeah, exactly, the, yeah, the, maybe, the uh, yeah. The, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, holding... maybe give me my transcript and I'll sign over my right to sue you for asbestos exposure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of like all the monsters. Or <laughs> yeah, or lead. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. asbestos and lead in, in some of the buildings at our university. Yeah, the yeah. water fountains in the building I spent my entire time at one. Oh, guess what I saw when I was in Ottawa? Speaking of game that. stores, asbestos. a microplay. A really? Microplay? Yeah. In fact, I believe I, there were two. Wow. wow. So the world still has microplay. I'm so sad. Uh, I like I haven't I thought Microplay was gone ten thousand years ago when it left here. I didn't know that was a national Game? thing. Yeah. yeah, apparently so. There was yeah, there was uh More like it was, macro it was right there next to the Shwarma place. Uh which was rocking by the way, if you're ever in Ottawa, Shwarma Palace. It's terrific. The uh Ottawa tourism guy over here. Right? Uh, <laughs> it it was it was excellent. I, it was the first time I had ever had Shwarma too. Because I don't think we, we have a local shawarma place. Speaking of shawarma, uh, Atari is coming out with a new uh, handheld console. Um, yeah. So that wasn't a segue at all, but I need to get on to the topic. You don't have all the but, uh, So Atari, but it may or may not be the same as the other console. It's different. So Atari's coming out with two new consoles. Hang on, I'll get yeah. the, get the thing here. Come back, so Fetus according is going to Atari, release from this hell. Uh, well, the Atari has already unveiled a brand new console uh, to come. Uh... Atari, the, an Atari 2600 style thing, is, according to IGN, is coming out. It's called the Atari Retro Handheld. Basically what it is, is kind of like the Switch. It's a tablet, but it's styled like an Atari. So it's a comedy, it's a mixture of like a tablet and an Atari, uh, and, a, and like a plug-and-play console where it comes preloaded with 50 Atari games. And, um... You get, uh, and it comes on this little like handheld console with, with 
responsive buttons and an, and a, and a high def screen. Oh, responsive buttons. For all right. The, you know, a high def screen for all those twenty six hundred games. That no, it's about time. I'm sick of all these regular buttons. Um, and thank you. Atari. I mean, it's a cool looking thing. It'll depend on the price point, but they were like IGN was trying to make it sound like fifty games is a lot. I'm like fifty Atari games. You could fit fifty Atari games onto a like a. On like a CD, not even uh, a DVD. Yeah, I was gonna say on like a TI eighty three calculator. Yeah, yeah. though. Yeah, people are willing to spend like twenty three thousand dollars on Nintendo Classic, whatever the hell feces they got going on. I'm sure everybody's gonna be all over these fifty games. Yeah, I don't. They'll be so. buying it for at least eighty thousand. It's gonna be stuff like Asteroids and Centipede. Oh man, can't play that for free in your browser. Oh. No. The, like, I on any computer. It is, I mean, it is a nice-looking thing uh, for what it is. It's small. It's, it's about the same. It's a little bit thicker than your phone. But it's still uh, going to take up what, space. What, yeah. what I was going to say is, uh, I got rid of it, but I had a version of Asteroids that I could play on this. That's pretty impressive, phone. yeah. So did we, did we <laughs> clarify that, that, that we don't show. know that this mm-hmm. is different than the thing they announced at E3? Uh, so there are two consoles. There's another console coming out that we have not yeah. that has has they've announced that it's coming out, but no deals. That, with the that was the one we talked about, where yeah. they said that's the one for new gaming content. Yeah, yeah. And then there's this new other Atari. one, which is basically a plug and play handheld console that yeah. comes with fifty old games. I don't have a problem with this thing in okay. in like massively. It's just. Uh, it'll depend on the price point. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting looking device. It's got interesting styling. It tries to go for that whole retro Atari thing. It's just more like you guys have said it. Like you can get these ga- uh, most of the games that you want to play for this this system for free and, on the internet. Yeah. I wonder, you, I wonder if Todd Howard's running Atari as well. You could find a way. I'm sure you could find a way to play revamp the these Great. games and distribute them on Steam. And yeah. then a bunch of people will buy them. You can have the Atari bundle. I'm pretty yeah. sure they're there already, already is buy... the Atari yeah, I'm pretty sure they're already all on Steam. I I, I think they're on 360 even. I think See, they have the Atari some... collection. Oh my god, this is some bullshit. I remember uh, being able to buy an Atari collection like plug and play console back in a supermarket back in 2005. Yeah, there you I, go. I had yeah. one. Yeah, like mm. yeah. I think you still so unless do. this thing comes in a I goddamn do, cereal box, I'm against it. The uh <laughs> like Man, Seriously. Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 came in a cereal box, and that game was great. Oh, yeah, that was a this, wicked game. Drop this in a box of Captain Crunch, and I'm in, and it's an excuse to start eating Captain Crunch again. Are you a Captain Crunch, Captain man? Captain Crunch. Oh, man, oh, Captain yeah. Crunch is great. Captain Crunch is brilliant. It's too sweet. It's too sweet? It's never too late for Crunch. What cereal do you eat? Crunch or what do you eat, plain cornflakes or some bullshit? Like, what do you eat? Like, oat, oat quinoa, hipster nonsense? That's like, <laughs> like I, I eat, like, Life cereal. No. Life brand Crunch. Not just life. Yeah, life cereal. Yeah. Life brand life. I have uh, and, I have... and Cheerios. And that's a wormhole there. <laughs> I'm wicked excited. Man, do you remember Reese Puff cereal? They I still have remember. it. I never they had still it. not only do they still have it. I was on their official website a few years ago, and you can make your own rap beats. The uh... I think in Canada it's called Reese's Puffs. Oh please, it is called Reese's. But in the U.S. Puffs. it's Reese's Puffs. Send me that link. I'm gonna work that into one of my songs. Yeah. Week. So Excellent. that makes me wonder. 100%. So in Canada it's Reese's Pieces. In the U.S. is it just Reese Pieces? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why that one change? I don't know. It's like Beast Wars and Beasties. I know. Oh my God, yeah. it's so frustrating. Yeah, yeah really you're right. Though. Yeah, there's these two boxes right next to each other. One says Reese's Puffs. One says Reese Puffs. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Maybe one, maybe one company is owned by Reese Witherspoon. Anyway, I, oh man, she's one, awesome. I only know that because I got into an argument with someone from the Quick stage. Shout out to Reese Witherspoon. Called. I was yeah. like, "It's Reese's Puffs." Flash so like, it's it's right Reese here. Puff. <laughs> Just give him a shout. I'm like, no, it's both. <laughs> oh man, my arm. You can't hurt fetus like that. The, so this Atari oh. thing is hilarious. It's hilarious that there's two of them. It's comical. And we don't know anything on it. The Atari website doesn't well, exist. The, the last... Atari website is the worst piece of shit we've ever... <laughs> what was the last yeah. Atari console? Was it the Jaguar? I think the Jaguar was the last one. They probably yeah. made some real comical, like, plug-and-play garbage things in the early 2000s. I think I recall seeing some. No, I mean, like, proper console that wasn't mm. plug-and-play. Well, yeah. I don't know if these consoles are proper either, then. No. Well, they say there's going to be new games yeah. on one of them. Probably the Jaguar. I, don't I mean, know. don't get me wrong. Like, I have a lot of respect and love for the, uh, for the for the 2600. It was a very important milestone in gaming history. But, like, you know, again, these are very old games. First That's off, you can only good. fit 50 Is on this thing. Atari I could fit, a, like, 300 Atari games on this Atari phone, and I wouldn't need to take up a gigabyte. 
because in England they had more of a computer video game thing than here. And da, 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 da. But, oh. Trying to say, oh, and then they just started making games. They did make Enter the Matrix. Y'all remember that remember. game? Yep. Yep. Do you, do you remember the Ghostbusters Atari game? That happened. It was. It happened for the Xbox 360 and PS3. Oh, see, I never played that because I was never a, fa- a Ghostbusters fan. Hmm. I'm not sure if that was necessary for the yeah. immersion of the game. Or what not. was better, uh, Enter the Matrix or Path of Neo? I have no idea. I also do not know. Apparently, I've, I've, I only I've, played Enter the Matrix. Same here. Okay. It had the world's been, most like Path arduous uh, cheat input system. Uh, that's what oh, I remember cheats. about it. Okay, so there's 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 the Atari Corporation, yeah, and there's the Atari Atari Inc. And they're two separate. So Atari Inc. was what Atari was before the video game crash in 1983, and then Atari Corporation is what came out of that. And they're t- and they're two separate Wikipedia entries. So if you want any stuff by Atari after 1983 on Wikipedia, you gotta go. You're just gonna have you to. Gotta go. Go to cor- you gotta corp. go. Yeah, you gotta go to Corp. You gotta go somewhere else. They don't like you here. Let's see what Baby Corp. <laughs> list of products. So they had the Atari ST, the Atari XE, the Atari 780, oh, here the Atari Portfolio, the Atari Lynx, the Atari Panther, which was canceled, the Atari Jaguar, and the Atari Jaguar CD right, yeah. was the last ever console that which Atari was, came which out with. Which was just wow. an add-on to the Atari. It, it was a toilet that sat on top of the of the Jaguar. One of the, one of the best videos I've ever seen. For what? Was the Atari Jaguar videos from uh, Angry Video Game? Oh Nerd. yeah, they're great. Uh, Couldn't get the work. Could not do it. No. Oh, shit. At least the Sega CD worked. Kind of. Yeah. You're gonna and, die, man. And actually, the only other thing I can think Take of the fetus. Atari CD for enjoyment that I ever had was Spoonie series, oh, where he yeah. played the Highlander video game on it, yeah. and somehow got it to work. I don't know how he got it to work. Black was Magic. Not- it was notorious that thing did not work, because the connections were all fucking made out of gum or whatever. Mm. I mean, should probably end. Yeah, yeah probably. so yeah, not too much happened this week, but some, some big stuff. Some noticeable, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had some items. Uh, Half of this room's uh, award nominees. Oh uh, yeah, we want to talk. You should pat him on the back. Is he that, does oh, good job. Oh, also, congratulations to Aaron, who I just and found Thomas. out has done something. Yeah. I, oh. He's a graphic I congratulated Thomas product. when he walked in. Yeah, for my my did, thingy. Did fetus <laughs> just yeah. flock? Oh, he never mind. Okay, there's a I didn't know there. Aaron was also nominated for something. So yeah, we me and Thomas got award things. Nice. Mm-hmm. We have an award ceremony for music and a bunch of different categories. And Thomas was anou- uh, is nominated for the electronic urban or, artist of the year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Aaron was nominated for best album cover. I think it was graphic, graphic artist of the year. Oh, whatever. Yeah, which is pretty cool. That's yeah, damn cool. And I hope he wins. He I hope it. you also win, Thomas. Thank you. Let's let's make it happen. No, <laughs> I hope everybody wins. No offense. You're probably neither of you are gonna win, not because of your own skills, <laughs> not because what? or anything that starts with no offense, instant defense. Not, not because no, 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 hang on, not because of your own skills, but because in the past the uh, adjudicators of this uh, particular award show can be slightly biased. This is gonna be a great. This mm-hmm. is they're gonna watch this. They're gonna be like, yeah, they're, they're, our award they're gonna show. watch this. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people in this place would watch to get information on people. Sure. Fair enough. The, uh, keep in mind, only Adam is saying uh, this about this. Another thing about islands, like rumors and stuff, that's and whatnot tire. spread. Yeah, like not... it's amazing how quickly information spreads about people. And that's true. Place. That's how rubber works. That is, I think that's a hundred percent how it works. I'm an engineer. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, got to go ahead from Thomas. So <laughs> move on. Seal of approval. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll uh, see you next time, then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Later. Bye. Peace.